Yeah, yeah Bookie. I'm trying to record the lady I call mine on TV. People in the U.S. die every day from an opioid related overdose. Doctors That's my wife, bitch. Uh -huh. That's your wife. What you say? But the nigga come with a cost each and every year. To make a few years, to make a few years. Efforts going on to deal with what's becoming a deadly spike in misuse and overdoses with no definite end in sight. Eleven News reporter Omar Menez shows us what's going on across Maryland now to face this head on from the lab. I'll call you back. Um, what time you want to do? For whom the bell tolls. I'm gonna call you back before you go to bed. A lot. Huh? Delano Johnson knows. I'm gonna text you. I'm gonna call you. 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 And then just you might just have an audio where the individual has oh, yeah. a description. Oh my god, look at D, oh my god. That's what's up. Down here. Because we're going to shoot the commercial like tomorrow. Okay, mm -hmm. Johnson is part of the opioid overdose survivors prevention program. Those who OD and end up at either University of Maryland Medical or Harbor Hospital get referred to him. People like Richard Hullett. I started out on pain pills. And Harold Shaper. But I ain't even buying heroin out there anymore. Yeah, you're, you're buying fentanyl, and it killed me. And, uh, you know, these guys that are selling it, they don't care. No. Statewide in 2016, through only September, the number of heroin-related deaths mm -hmm. jumped to more than 900. Compared to the year prior, that's a 70% increase. Damn. Across wow. the board, alcohol, cocaine, and prescription opioid deaths all up. Stemming from use either in combination with heroin or the synthetic at the center of it all. Fentanyl. Right. It killed at least 738 people in 2016. Mm. Over the same period in 2015, it didn't even crack 200. Even handling the drugs means extra precaution. Right. At the DEA Mid-Atlantic Laboratory, heroin is increasingly making up a larger percentage of the five to 6,000 units they see a year. We tell the agents no powder is safe. It started off that we saw an increase in heroin exhibits, we saw a rise in impurity of heroin, and then we started to see that now. Now, the signs in the lab are clear. Just in case, a naloxone injector okay. sits on a nearby okay. table okay. so the drug can be absorbed yeah. even through the skin. The okay. option to okay. just turn our heads to oh, say it's too okay. big yeah. is not an option. Clay okay. Stam directs the state's Opioid Operation Coordination Center in the midst of Governor Larry Hogan's state of emergency, which one might typically associate with a flood or hurricane. No different, really, other than the fact that we're, we're trying to address a more chronic situation that needs an acute jump start. It means getting critical messaging out that can be implemented by local jurisdictions. And unlike a hurricane that may pass, this storm is ongoing. No definite end in sight. It's not in a neat package and there are things we know and there's a lot of things we don't know. Right. Among what we don't know, a perfect long-term solution. But what we do know is there are differences being made. There's no amount of money no good as that you can compare you guys, yeah. to that type of reward when you see somebody God, just good. starting to live again. When you see that somebody starting to participate in their own lives again <coughs> mm -hmm. and they're smiling again. Yeah. One day I'd like to get to college. I'm 48, you know. Big I mean, how much longer am I going to last out there? I don't think that long. They gonna pay for it. They gonna I don't know a lot of old junkies. So with that in mind, Johnson drives to the next person brought DJ, back from the dead, that? hoping to keep them on this I side of mortality. Omar Jimenez, WBAL TV 11. Addiction, no education, no economic class. Its grip is firm, and getting free from it is a long-term proposition. I-Team lead investigative reporter Jane Miller shows us the toll it takes from the city to the suburbs. So at the end, okay. um, I was living in the end. Faye is 53 years old. One day last month, she took us on a tour of where she'd been living until January, addicted to drugs. And I ended up living here, and I ended up eating out the trash. I ended up sleeping with rats and rats in here. As you can see, um, my clothes that I wore probably are still in there. 
you know, no clean water, no running water. So a lot of days I didn't get to take a bath. You know, um, I had to go other places in restaurants um, or use people's backyards to wash up. And you were just squatting? I was squatting. A squat. Yes. And this was the condition when you lived in it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. The ceiling's coming down. Yeah. So when it rains, it rains inside of here too. Careful where you step. Needles, discarded food, dog waste. Hard to imagine this is your life. Addiction caused Phaedra, her house, her job, her car. This trash is food. It's the, it's, you know, when you finish eating. Because it's like dog feces with it. Well, everything goes on in its backyard. I mean, you're, it's an abandoned house. And a lot of times, this is where I went to the bathroom. Back here. We're just in this backyard? Well, all the way back here. Oh, yeah, in that so corner. Pretty. I lived. Jane Hood and a mother. Look at my baby. I know, you can't imagine it, can you? Mm -hmm. I know that addiction is a powerful phenomenon. Yes. Yeah. It takes away just about all of your concepts. Yeah. And self-respect. Troy is 46. He lives in Hartford County. Each morning, it's picked up from transitional housing and taken to a methadone. I wasn't on methadone. I don't know where I 